more recently you've done work in what you call social physics. Would you like to say a few words about the nature of social physics and maybe give a couple of examples? Well, social physics is this phrase that's a couple centuries old, this idea that we could use statistics to understand the evolution of culture. And that's why we have, for instance, a census today in, in our country. Uh, but it sort of died out because they didn't have the math and they didn't have the data. Yeah. But now we have all this data about human behavior and we have much more sophisticated math. Yeah. And so we can take things that are actually a little bit like particle physics. Uh, math is a little bit different, but it's reminiscent. Mm -hmm. uh, and begin to describe the pattern of interactions. And right. what you see when you do that is that these smarter teams drops out of that. The idea of breaking up silos to have more resilient and innovative teams drops out of that. Right. It's also ways to generate behavior change, to be able to convince people to find a new way of behaving that's better for everybody. It's like the analogy with physics is if you know the fundamental principles, you can build better bridges that are safer. If you understand the principles of that's social right. interaction, you can build more resilient teams. That's right. And so we're just beginning to do that. Right. And it's related to this idea of nudge and yeah. things like that, yeah. where people have these things that look irrational, but actually what they are is, is their mechanisms of learning from each other right. and behaving with each other, right. signaling each other. It's not irrational, it's human. It's just the way we are. And actually, it's how we make ourselves smarter. Yep. Those things that look irrational on the individual, right. when you put a bunch of people together, it turns out that's the mechanism that makes groups smarter than individuals. Yeah, And that's, yeah. that's a major shift in focus in, in your work, right? That's it's right. Getting away from just focusing on individual to group behaviors. That's right. That's more the object of and, study. And you know, it's actually why we're successful as a species is somehow we figured out how to work together in groups and that that was smarter, made us more fit mm -hmm. than if we were just individuals. That's mm -hmm. why we're social. And this has practical implications, right? This, these are lessons that companies and organizations and, and, and public sector organizations can use right now, yeah. right? I mean, it's, it's first of all to make better decisions yeah. and avoid things like group That's things, number but one. also to concentrate information, but also to be more innovative. Mm -hmm. Innovation requires harvesting ideas from lots of places and then finding the ones that play well to establish a new norm of behavior. Mm -hmm. And that requires certain patterns of communication. And mm -hmm. we can measure those and encourage those. Mm -hmm. And as a result, make a more innovative organization.